Hi, students from around the world. Thank you for joining us as we talk about Canadian universities and the Duolingo English test. Um, the Duolingo English test is uh, providing this opportunity for you to learn more about Canadian universities from the experts. Uh, and so we're going to kick it off here with just a, a, a real quick journey through the Canadian university landscape. Um, here are a number of universities. Uh, in Canada and colleges and institutes that accept the Duolingo English test. You'll see four highlighted with an underline, Concordia, New Brunswick Community College, University of Alberta, and University of Toronto. They are our four attendees, our special guests today, and they will be um, telling you not just about the Canadian process, but they will also tell you about their own institutions, and we're going to have plenty of time for questions and answers as well. Um, we're grateful that you're here. Um, my background is uh, as a school counselor. So I lived in Singapore and Hong Kong for 14 years, helping students around the world um, decide where to go to university, um, helping them and their parents through the application process. And I spent a lot of time helping students with the Canadian application process uh, in sending students to these four institutions and others. Um, and so I'm going to give them all an opportunity to introduce themselves and then we'll continue on with more information about Canada. John, if you'll kick us off. Uh, hi everyone, greetings from Edmonton, Alberta, which is in the western side of Canada. My name is John Gregory and I'm the Director of International Recruitment at the University of Alberta. And I'll hand over to Natasha. Thanks, John. Hi, everyone. My name is Natasha. I'm the Assistant Director of International Student Recruitment at the University of Toronto. So I'm coming to you live from the city of Toronto, uh, which is Canada's largest city. And I want to thank Duolingo and my colleagues for joining me today. We we'll pass it over to Matt. Bonjour, everyone. My name is Matt Stigmeyer. I'm the Director of Student Recruitment at Concordia University in Montreal. Um, the, we're in the French-speaking part of Canada in Quebec, but uh, we're an English institution, so uh, hence the connection to Duolingo. Uh, nice, to, nice to connect with everyone today. And I'll hand it off to Lucas. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the presentation. My name is Lucas Leo. I'm the manager of international education and engagement at uh, New Brunswick Community College, NBCC. It's a pleasure and honor to be here today. And uh, just want to share that uh, I'm also was a uh, international graduate, a former international student who studied in Canada. So you are definitely picking the right presentation to participate and showing interest to, to starting in this great country. Wonderful, thank you all. And uh, Lucas, we're gonna pass it over to you to continue on talking about study options in Canada. Great. Yeah, like I was saying that as a former international student, I definitely have a lot of uh, testimonial to go on. And uh, Canada as an education location is has been one of the top choice in across the world. It is the second largest country in the world, but with only a 37 million people population. And uh, talking about a cult, uh, multiculturalism, Canada is the first country in the world that adopted multiculturalism as a official policy. 22% of the population who are living here was born actually outside of Canada, such as myself. And uh, also that uh, Canada is ranked as number one uh, country in the world that uh, to live, work, and study. And uh, Canada is also uh, uh, ranked as number one uh, for in G20 as the easiest place to start a business, according to the World Bank. It is uh, one of the five largest en uh, you know, energy producer in the world. So there's, as you can see, not just from education, from multiculturalism and uh, to uh, employment and uh, opportunity to live in here, Canada is definitely a great destination for you to consider. And uh, also, Canada is uh, fully committed to education, and uh, we uh, the, all across the post-secondary sector with the universities and the colleges that uh, uh, um, 
the, the, the we have been performing an estimate of 38 percent of uh, all research and uh, um, uh, R&D in Canada and more than any other OECD countries. And for innovation side of it, there's a lot of cutting edge technology and research has been done by the post-secondary institution across this nation. And also uh, uh, the diversity connection, over 95% of the uh, uh, diversity connections, over 95% of the Canadians live within 50 kilometers uh, uh, of a college or institute. So uh, not only that, you know, you, you will be able to have a opportunity to study here, but also there is a many, many paths to work and a permanent resident in Canada. The most popular you know, uh, term that uh, you have heard already is our post, uh, post-graduation work permit or our you know, uh, provincial nominee programs uh, or many other pathways uh, to, Im to immigration opportunities after your study. And uh, also I would like to cover a little bit of terminology and just in case that you know, through your education experience that you are not uh, really familiar with uh, how Canadian education is a Saturday too. I'm not gonna read it through the whole slide. This is recording will be sent to you after you know the, the, the presentation. So you can read it through or taking screenshots if you like. Um, but a couple of things I want to point out. One is uh, uh, as a college that uh, you know it is a higher education uh, often refers as a post-secondary te technical trade applied arts or applied science school. So it's not like uh, in, in the United States as a, a you know a, as a college of a liberal art college. So what do we study here in college and institute are a little bit different. University is an institute of higher education offers a range of advanced diplomas. You already include bachelor, masters, or PhD program. So when you are looking for schools that you know consider a different level of study, you should really reach out to the level of uh, institution uh, accordingly. And then the last thing I want to point out is the law and the medicine programs are secondary options in Canada. What that means is that you do need an undergraduate uh, study, complete your undergraduate study to be able to apply for those, 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 those programs. In certain countries, they, that may not be the case, but in Canada, they are a secondary option, a secondary degree option. So, um, the as we talk a little bit about the difference between college uh, a college institute and a university and now i want to just bring your attention to just the college side before you know i leave you to the capable hands of my colleagues talking about in the great universities and um, college is normally as known as as community college or uh, polytechnics and uh, and normally that colleges and institution would offer you know one year certificate or two-year diplomas, and some of us would also offer combined programs such as joint degrees with a university partner, and also, you know, some of the institutions are uh, credentialed to offer bachelor or applied degrees as well. And one key part that college always offer is an apprenticeship program um, that is normally a lot of time related to very hands-on uh, 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 subjects such as trades. Um, uh, programs. And uh, there are over 8,000 programs uh, at campuses in uh, uh, over a, nearly a thousand communities across Canada. So for you, when you are considering college study, that there's really a wide range of uh, options for you to choose from, depends on which location you want to go to. And the length of the study can be vary as well from a few months to four years. And uh, almost all the colleges offer work integrated learning because that's what a colleges and institutes are really focused on is that hands-on experience to making sure that you have a great opportunity for a career path and for a job opportunity uh, after you graduate. As you can see, the last bullet point proves that an average employment rate uh, uh, for college graduates in Canada right now sits at around 90% within six months of graduating. Of course, that's great to attend college and institute, but we also have a, a lot of a great, fantastic universities, which is I'm gonna hand it over to my colleagues from the university side to talk about the university advantages. 
That's great. Thanks so much, Lucas. Um, so in Canada, we have just about 100 universities, 97 if you um, want to be exact. The uh, university size will vary with some up to 60,000 students, some are had to lower a few thousand. Unlike our uh, neighbours to the south, actually all universities in Canada are public, including all the highest ranked universities are public universities. And the quality of Canadian universities is demonstrated by around 10% of them being in the global top um, 200 universities. We have a number in the top 50, a few in the top 100, and more in the top 200, but all universities being uh, publicly funded is a good sign of um, high quality institutions. Um, Canada is becoming an increasingly popular destination for international students and it's really great to see 96% of international students would recommend um, Canada as a study destination and that students already studying in Canada so they come and study and they would really recommend it to their friends and um, peers. And as Leo mentioned, in terms of the employment outcomes, they're very um, high in Canada, um, and there's a lot of alumni um, employment opportunities in Canada. Virtually all universities have large careers offices, which will help students uh, look for jobs upon graduation. So universities offer a range of um, programs. All universities would offer a bachelor's degree. Uh, which is in Canada is typically four years in study, um, depending on what you're studying. This option maybe to do a major where it's main area of focus or a minor alongside that as well. Some universities offer dual majors, but it really depends on the program. Uh, for those of you who have already obtained your bachelor's and looking at a graduate qualification, master's degrees vary from one to two years. And we have a range of masters. We have the course-based uh, masters, which are mostly taught programs, but there's also the thesis-based masters, which is where you would be conducting more research. And if you want to get the doctor initials before your name, then we offer PhDs as well, which will vary in length um, from three to five years. Uh, some students will go on to them um, after their ma masters, some can go on to a PhD earlier. And there's also various other qualifications offered um, at universities, whether that be certificates or diplomas. Now, this is a relatively uh, complex slide, so I would recommend you check um, with your institution and maybe with um, Citizenship and Immigration Canada in terms of questions regarding which institution allows you to work in Canada. If you have a spouse, um, can they work? And children study, um, etc. So it would be best to check with um, CIC and the institution on this. But the next slide will give a bit more details on working in um, Canada. So as an international student, generally you can work in Canada for 20 hours per week uh, during term time and additional hours uh, during the vacation um, periods. Uh, some students can quite take quite long breaks from their studies over the summer period, so they're off from around April to the start of September. Other students may want to fast track their degree and study over the summer. Uh, but typically you can work 20 hours per week and that's on or off campus. Uh, minimum wage uh, rates vary by provinces and many programs offer the opportunity to undertake paid work experience during your degree, whether that be a co-op opportunity, a paid work placement or some voluntary experience. But it's a good thing when you're looking at programs to see if work experience is offered. One of the great attractions to Canada is, as um, Lucas mentioned, we have lots of land, but not many uh, people. So we do offer post-graduation work permit of up to three years. So that means after finishing a Canadian degree or some other qualifications, you are able to work um, full-time for three years in Canada. And many students who take this route get a job which they then use to apply as a pathway um, to permanent 
residency. Um, as Lucas mentioned, nearly a quarter of the population are from outside Canada. I myself came to the University of Alberta many years ago as an exchange student and met my um, wife there. So if you're looking to work in a country after graduation, Canada's a great option for you. And I'll hand over to my um, colleague. Thanks, John. Thanks, Lucas, for a great start. So we'll talk a little bit now about the financial piece of studying in Canada and take a look at what it costs and what are some of your funding opportunities for studying across the country. So this slide here will show you uh, a kind of an average of the annual fees to study in Canada, so including tuition and any student fees like ancillary or incidental fees that might be charged, room and board, personal and health insurance, health insurance, which is mandatory for all international students coming to Canada, uh, things like books, etc. What you're going to find is a pretty big range across the entire country, so a range not only within the colleges but also within the university system. So it's really important to check with each institution to see what the fees are for specific for those specific universities. There may also be differential fees for uh, programs within those schools. So some programs might be a little bit more expensive than others, uh, depending on the curriculum that's being taught. So there is a pretty big range. And as I said, it's very important to check with each institution for those details. One other thing to note as well is that if you are a Canadian citizen or permanent resident of Canada living outside of Canada, if you decide to come back to Canada to study, you are eligible for domestic fees. Uh, because John mentioned earlier that Canadian schools are predominantly public, uh, the system is predominantly public, we have a differential rate for Canadian citizens and permanent residents of Canada, even if you are studying outside of the country. And then decide to come back, as I should clarify. Um, historically, Canada has represented excellent value for students uh, when they're looking at their post-secondary options, both in the colleges and the universities. So this slide here shows you kind of a comparable, uh, a comparison between Canada and other countries around the world. So depending on the kind of institution you're looking for, the program you're looking for, um, you're going to find some excellent value for your studies for both your undergrad and any graduate or postgraduate work pro uh, programs that you might be looking at. Part of the study permit process for international students coming to Canada includes proof of funds. Um, so the, the study permit process is what you would go through after you've been admitted to a university in, or a college in Canada, depending on what program, what level of study you're interested in studying. You would go through the study permit process. Uh, and part of that application includes proof of funds to show that you have enough money to come and study and stay in Canada. All of our universities and colleges will have folks that can help you with the study permit process. So if you have any questions about what you need to show, what documentation you need, you can chat with our certified immigration advisors at our schools that can help you with the process of applying for your study permit. And so the big question is, how can you pay for it? Uh, certainly all of our schools will offer some type of scholarships for international students. So they could be merit-based scholarships that take a look at your academic performance. Some of them may also include, include applications where you can highlight some of your leadership uh, your leadership skills and your extracurricular activity and that may help you get some scholarships. Some of them also could be talent based. If you are coming to play for a varsity sports team at our schools, uh, there may be some additional funding that you can qualify for that way. A lot of the times the scholarships at our schools are merit based and don't require any undergraduate, any uh, supplemental applications, pardon me. So just by applying to the universities, submitting your documents, applying to the colleges, submitting your documents, you may be eligible for some merit based scholarships at our schools. The other thing to mention as well is, uh, and Lucas and John both alluded to it, is the opportunity to work in Canada. So you can work part time while you're a student, you can work full time in the summertime, and it's very common for students in Canada to be studying full time and have part time work. You can also look at opportunities like co op programs where you can get a full time paid work experience related to your program and some of that funding and help cover your studies. The last thing I do want to mention is uh, financial aid. Because we are a public system in Canada, there's very, very limited financial aid options for international students in our country. So if you are looking for needs-based programs, it's best to check with each individual university or college to see what your options are, uh, because it may be quite limited depending on where you're coming from and your situation. Uh, so definitely check with each one of us to see if there are any opportunities for financial aid at our institutions. And I'll hand it over to uh, Matt for the application process. Okay. Uh, hi everyone. So I'll I'll go through uh, the application process. Um, it's 
generally speaking, uh, you're, you're going to apply directly to the institution. Um, and it's, it's quite straightforward. Uh, so maybe next slide uh, so we can bring up the screen. Um, there's, a, there's a notable exception uh, with Ontario, and I'll, I'll talk about that in just a second. So in Canada, our academic year uh, typically runs from September to April, uh, and the bulk of our students will start in September. So our applications for the September entry uh, usually open sometime in October and will be available uh, generally until March of the following year. Uh, you may find that there are institutions that will also welcome you into the uh, January semester or the winter semester. Uh, that would be something that you'd want to look at each individual institution and see if that's an offering uh, both at the school as well as what you want to study. Okay, with Canadian applications, uh, one of the things that you're going to hear as a theme is that you're going to see things change for each institution. So for some schools like Concordia, uh, you have to choose a major. So you have to choose something that you want to study. Uh, for other schools, you might be able to apply to a faculty, so like the Faculty of Social Sciences, but you don't have to decide on your major until your, after your first or even second year. Uh, and then some areas, uh, some schools may actually let you come in as undecided. So this is one of those things where you have to do your research. You have to think about both what you want to study as well as what the institution is requiring. Uh, and then just generally a good rule of, of thumb to keep in mind is that we're typically looking for early applications. And I think our next slide uh, explains this a little bit. So if we could move ahead, yeah. Um, so a lot of the institutions in Canada have what's called rolling admissions. So when our applications open as of September or October, uh, if we have enough academic history uh, to review your file, uh, we may start making offers as early as November or December. Uh, there are some programs, so again, like I said, for every rule, there's 10 exceptions in Canada. So some programs uh, will, will release all their decisions once they have their complete pool. Uh, at, at my school, that's typically things that have like a portfolio requirement. Um, it might be a competitive program. Uh, so again, this is where you have to spend time on our websites and, and look into um, the nuances in, in each institution's process. Ideally, what we want to do in Canada is to issue our decisions uh, sometime in the early winter, so kind of between February and try to wrap things up in April, so that you have enough time as an international student to apply for your study permit. Uh, and that's really what drives that, uh, that early decision, that early, sorry, that early uh, application. Um, because the earlier you submit your application and give us all the required documents, then the earlier we can get our decisions out, which is uh, then when you can start uh, applying for your uh, study permit and if you're interested in Quebec, there's a second level of study permit um, called the CAQ. I'm not gonna spend time on that today, but if you're interested, uh, you'll have my email. Please reach out and I'm happy to follow up on that individually. Uh, we put up here on the slide that, you know, if you're familiar with the US, there's this sort of May 1st idea where they want all of their decisions out. That's not really a thing in Canada. Uh, I know many of my colleagues, uh, we, we strive to have all of our decisions before then, um, but it's because we tend to be a little more flexible with our timeline, uh, we can't have a hard date where we just release all of our decisions uh, because again, depending on the school, we may still be taking applications or supporting material 
after that May uh, first date. Okay, um, before I forget, um, yeah, this is good. Uh, I said most of the institution, um, you'll apply directly to us. Uh, Ontario does, and I think most of the institutions, maybe uh, Natasha can just nod for me, um, will also allow direct uh, application as well as use the uh, central Ontario application uh, service. So I think you have a option there to do one or the other. Um, as a Quebec school, we don't we don't do that, so that's not my area. <laughs> Thanks, Natasha. Okay, and then briefly we'll talk about what's required. Again, this is going to change by school. This is going to change by what you want to study. So it's always important to look at uh, to really be careful with our website. Generally, uh, we're looking for your academic grades. So for undergraduate programs, we're looking at the last two or three years of your academic performance. Uh, again, generally for international students, uh, we're also going to look for an English proficiency test. So that's of course where we partner up with Duolingo, um, but you see some of the other options listed on the screen. Again, not every school will take every test, so it's your responsibility to make sure that you do your homework there. ACT or SATs come up a lot. Uh, this is gonna depend on your school and sometimes uh, where you're coming from. Uh, some of us do not require these tests at all. Others may require just three uh, specific programs and others depending on the kind of school you attend. Uh, if you're familiar with the U.S. admissions, so things like extracurriculars or essays or letters from your counselor or from your teacher, uh, it really varies. Uh, again, I think when we prepped for this call, about 85 to 90 percent of our programs don't require these kind of things, but some of our more competitive programs uh, something like an education uh, program might look for uh, background information or a, a personal statement. So these are the kind of things where you have to spend time on our website, reach out to your recruiter, uh, talk to your counselor to figure out how to make the, the right application to a university. Okay, and then I'll wrap things up on the last slide uh, from my section with a timeline. So if we could just move one ahead, please. Looks like that slide is skipped on my side, Matt, so. Oops. Okay, uh, so there we go. So then, <laughs> so basically um, between now and the end of the, the calendar year, this is when our applications will open where you want to uh, submit your, your documents to us, uh reach out and you know start looking at virtual tours and oh yeah that's what i was expecting um you know make sure that it's the the right fit uh if your program requires it now is a good time to to start thinking about who's going to write that letter of recommendation uh once you have those applications submitted so post november through the through the holiday break and and into the early winter uh, you want to monitor your email. Most of us are still sending communications out by email. So if you're, if you're not used to that, make sure you're checking your junk folder, marking us as safe senders, looking for updates. Some of us have systems where we're going to prompt you if you're missing something. Others are very strict and they expect you to be thorough and do your homework. And if you miss something, that'll be your responsibility. So you know, keep an eye on things, uh, but you know, decisions generally start rolling out December, January, February, um, but always, always make sure you're focusing on your last year of school. Uh, most of our offers in Canada are conditional on you keeping your grades for the graduating year, uh, graduating from your current program. Uh, so this is where you have to really put the emphasis on finishing strong. Uh, and then again, watch your emails. Those offers start coming in. You're getting excited. You, you choose a great Canadian institution. And then there's a whole other list of things over the, 
spring summer where you're gonna kind of get ready for for uh, your first year. And I think with that, it's time to hear a little bit more about our individual institutions. So I think I'm gonna pass it back to John. Perfect. Perfect. So as mentioned, I am from the University of Alberta, which is on the uh, western side of Canada in a city called Edmonton, which has a population of just over one million. Okay, next slide, please. Do. Um, so these are some of the highlights of the uh, University of Alberta, a relatively large um, University of Canada, not the largest on record today, but we have just over 40,000 students. Uh, Proud to be in the top five universities and top 100 in the world in rankings. Uh, we've got lots of strengths, but one of the ones in particular I'd like to highlight is our global artificial um, intelligence. A number of our faculty sold the game of uh, checkers or drafts, depending on what you call it, depending on the region you are. And we also have excellent uh, graduate employment outcomes. According to QS, we have the second highest graduate employment rate in Canada. And 2020, we had a bright spot in 2020, which was one of our faculty members, Dr. Michael Housen, won the Nobel Prize in Medicine for the discovery of the hepatitis and C virus. He works at our Virology Institute and they're working on many vaccines, including a COVID-19 vaccine. One of the um, areas we offer at the University of Alberta is we do offer a guaranteed tuition model to all our international students, which means the tuition you pay in your first year will be the exact same as the tuition in your final year. So you're guaranteed to have no tuition increases. So your tuition will remain the same throughout all four years of study, which really helps you and your parents plan on how much you would need to contribute to your studies. So the, Tuition will range from program to program or faculty to faculty, and these are the various levels um, we offer, but it's nice you're able to plan exactly how much your cost will be for all four years in terms of um, tuition. Now, I'll speak briefly uh, about scholarships. We have a number of scholarships which are automatically um, awarded, so you don't need to do any separate application for these. All you need to do is put in your main application and submit your academic uh, documents, and you could win all uh, three of these um, scholarships. A top student could enter uh, straight away with $16,000 of scholarships in their first year. And new for um, 2022 admission is our President's International Distinction Scholarship, which will be $120,000 over four years. Um, it's the highest award we've ever offered as a university. And we'll be offering at least 25 of these to international students. So if you're a really top student with strong academics, you've been a leader in your school and your community, I would strongly recommend you uh, apply for uh, this scholarship. Uh, we'll be offering 25, or actually awarding 25, so making more than 25 offers for these. So if you're a top student, there's a good opportunity to win this. And we do have an application day of the deadline of January the 12th. Uh, next slide, please. And there we are. That was a very brief highlight of the University of Alberta. And I'll hand over to uh, Matt, who will talk about Concordia. Great. Thanks, John. Uh, so yes, again, Matt from Concordia. Uh, next slide. So we are based, oh, I just wanted to say uh, hola to Maria from Venezuela, who gave Concordia a shout out in the chat. So uh, glad you could join us today. So Concordia, we're based in Montreal. Uh, we're generally ranked by QS as one of the best cities in North America for students. Um, certainly, being in Quebec, being in Canada, we get the question a fair bit about uh, winter. And one of the things we always talk about is it's a city that loves life in all of the seasons. And you can certainly see that uh, represented here. Uh, next slide. But I'm going to focus my brief time here on talking about our academic experience. 
So Concordia is based on two campuses in Montreal. Uh, on the left, you can see us based in the downtown core. So kind of the high city, high rise feel. On the right, about six kilometers away is our Loyola campus. And as a student, you're very likely to take classes on both campuses, uh, depending on what you intend to study. And you can see there, that's more the traditional uh, green space and older architecture. The way our programs are structured are split across four different faculties. And this is where we'll ask you to pick an area of study within. Our John Molson School of Business is quite well known for its small classes and our co-op experience, so the hands-on learning, uh, where we get some paid work experience integrated as part of your uh, degree. Uh, we have one of the largest fine arts faculties at a university in Canada. We have things ranging from the studio production to dance and music. Uh, arts and science is, is a, our largest space where we offer uh, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, uh, Bachelor of Education degrees. So these are the things thinking about um, humanities and liberal arts or chemistry or physics. Uh, I don't list them all because it's 110 different things. No one wants that. That's what the web is for. Uh, and then excitingly, our Gina Cody School of Engineering and Computer Science, where we're offering both the um, you know, traditional Bachelor of Engineering option, so something unique like building engineering, or uh, one of our top programs, aerospace engineering, uh, or the, the computer science degree. So a lot of different options kind of fits all kinds of interests. Uh, in terms of our admissions process, um, very, very straightforward. Uh, on our application, you apply to us, $100 fee, and then we actually offer you uh, three different options. You can choose three programs of interest, uh, and we'll consider you in order of your preference. So a lot of times students are interested in our commerce program, but might not have the math requirement to attend. And so we'll, it, we'll start you in another program, let you build up your math skills, and then you can move over into our Commerce program. Uh, yeah, and then we're going to ask you for those applications by February 1st is our soft deadline for international students. And again, if you remember, I talked about that extra immigration step. Uh, that's why we're looking to hear from you by February so that we can get those offers out a little earlier so that we can uh, help you move through that, that study permit and CAQ process. Uh, our fees uh, vary greatly by our degrees, so this is where I'd encourage you to visit our website. Um, but on the, you know, on the low end for our Bachelor of Arts, you're looking at something like 28,000 uh, Canadian for, for the year. Uh, on the higher end is something like our uh, Bachelor of Engineering, where we're looking at something like a $36,000 a year. So again, really varies depending on what you're interested in. Uh, come visit us on concordia.ca to, to check that out. And I believe I'm handing off to Lucas. Thank you, Matt. And. Uh... So now you will hear from me and talk about a little bit about the New Brunswick Community College, NBCC. And uh, New Brunswick Community College locates in the province of New Brunswick. And uh, we do have uh, six different campuses across the province. And please keep it in mind that we are an English teaching institution as well. And uh, uh, New Brunswick Company is known as the only bi official bilingual province in Canada. And we do have a French uh, uh, community college as well in the province, but NBCC is English teaching only. And across the six campuses, what we're focusing on is a very hands-on uh, uh, learning opportunity. As you can see here, 90% of our programs including a workplace practicum, which is also commonly known as a work integrated learning. And so it is a lot of hands-on experience and uh, a lot of uh, real life practice to prepare you for your graduation. 
And after you study with us, and we have a couple more numbers to show you the success you'll be looking for. Um, the next slide, please. Thank you. And 89% uh, um, of our 2018 graduates have been employed within one year from graduation. Uh, in the earlier presentation, talking about just college and institutes, that you, you know, I mentioned part that the higher number of uh, employment rate, which is, you know, we're at the, 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 the similar standard. So really the college's focus is to prepare you for career and job opportunity that you seek for. And actually in 2019, for our 2019 graduates, the number for, raised from 89 to 91. And uh, then also same time that for many international students, you want to come to study here and also stay here. 94% of employed 2018 graduates are actually working in New Brunswick. So really that a true study and stay part, you can come to New Brunswick and study and come to NBCC, finish your uh, education and find an employment opportunity within the province and stay here. And such as myself that I moved here 14 years ago and studied in New Brunswick. And as you can see, as you haven't left yet. And that's not because of lack of flights coming out of here to, to Toronto or Norman Trail, okay? Um, next slide, please. So another reason that uh, NBCC is a very popular among international students is because of our affordable tuition. And our annual tuition is only at 9,468 Canadian dollars for the entire academic year. And so with the tuition and uh, plus uh, some other uh, mandatory fees, such as your insurance and, and your tech and tech fees and student union fees, it sits at around, and your equipment, the books, it sits around at $12,699 for the academic year of 2021 to 2022. So as you can see, if you are seeking for a college to study and affordability is one of the main reason that you want to choose us, that's perfectly fine because the NBCC offers uh, not only a affordable tuition, but also New Brunswick offers a affordable living style as well. And next slide, please. And as you can see here that, you know, we have a many area of a study. And uh, so when we don't just offer trades program, nor, you know, we don't just, you know, uh, train chefs and uh, train plumbers, electricians, and we do offer programs such as engineering and business as well, some of the social science program as well. So there's over 90 different programs for you to choose from. Please feel free to go on our website and take a look at which one would be actually a better fit for you. And also we have a career guidance uh, uh, as well to help you better understand what's the average income and hiring opportunity within the province of New Brunswick. And the final slide, just to wrap it back to why you are here, that you are here to study and the language requirement is a, a very important part and we do require to language English test as a minimum score of 100 out of 160. And each institution would have a different requirement there. And we just want to make sure even you are not attending a university to study a more of academic based study, we still have a quite high of a language requirement for you to be able to successfully complete your study with a more of a hands-on environment. And that'd be all. And I'm going to hand over to Natasha and talk about the University of uh, Toronto. Thank you, Lucas. Hi, everyone. So I'm here to talk to you about the University of Toronto, which is consistently recognized as Canada's top research university and one of the top 20 universities in the world. Uh, we are also Canada's largest university, which is what John alluded to earlier in his discussion of U of A. Uh, the University of Toronto is Canada's largest university. Um, we have just over 90,000 students at the university, so we have a lot of students studying a lot of different areas of study. In Canada, we're known as a comprehensive medical doctoral research university, which means we offer a little bit of everything at all levels of study. So we've got those undergraduate bachelor degree programs, we've got master's PhD programs, we also have professional programs like law, medicine, dentistry, nursing, pharmacy, et cetera. So if you're looking for a specific program at a university in Canada, we probably offer it at the University of Toronto. One of the main reasons why uh, students will choose the University of Toronto to study is not just the university itself, but also the city of Toronto. 
uh, which is North America's fourth largest city. So we're right behind Mexico City, New York, and Los Angeles. So anything you could expect from a big city in North America, you will definitely find with the city of Toronto. Uh, Lucas mentioned earlier at the start that Canada has a policy for multiculturalism across the country, and that multiculturalism is certainly a feature of the city of Toronto, where just over half of the population was born outside of Canada. There's over 150 different languages spoken across the city. So one of the things that I find that students really like about coming to the city of Toronto is the food, because you can literally eat your way through the city of Toronto, no matter what kind of cuisine you are looking for, you will find it and you will find some delicious options for you here in the city. You can go to the next slide. So as Canada's largest university, we also have three campuses that our students get to choose from. So when I mentioned 90,000 students at the university, they're not all in one place. So we do take our student population and we break them up across three campuses. We have our St. George campus, which is the original founding campus for the university in downtown Toronto. It's our smallest campus by footprint, so about 100 acres of space, but the largest by student population. So we have around 35,000 undergraduate students that are studying here. It's a nice mix of old and new style architecture because this is the original founding campus from 1827. So you're going to find some really beautiful Gothic style architecture there. Now, just to the east and west of the St. George campus, we offer the U of T Scarborough campus and the U of T Mississauga campus. Both of these campuses are almost the opposite of the St. George campus. So they're both set on over two to 300 acres of green space. They're more self-contained campuses, but beautiful natural green spaces with hiking trails and rivers that run through both campuses. And they're also smaller. So they each have about 14 to 15,000 undergraduate students that study there. So when students are looking at U of T, we really emphasize fit. So whatever you're looking to do to study at the university, the first choice that you'll make is between the campuses, and it's really whatever is the best fit you're looking for in terms of your study environment. Ultimately, we also remind students that when you graduate from the University of Toronto, you graduate from the University of Toronto. You're not graduating from a specific campus. So really, all the, the high quality that you can expect from a university that's in the top 20 of the world, you will find across all three of our campuses. Now, the different program options that you have to study at the undergraduate level, we categorize them in five different areas. So you'll find arts, business, and science as one, engineering, architectural, and visual studies as one, as well as kinesiology and music. When we talk about arts, business, and science, we're referring to any program that's like English, history, political science, biology, human biology, statistics, computer science, management. All of those options are within the arts, business, and science, and students have the opportunity to study these different program areas across all three of our campuses. So something like history you'll find across all three. There are the unique options that we offer on the St. George campus downtown, and that includes the engineering program, architecture, kinesiology, and music. And these four different faculties each have about 5,000 students or less. So they're going to be much smaller learning environments for you if you're interested in these program areas. One of the nice things as well about the University of Toronto is that we are extremely flexible for students. So if you're interested in doing a major in chemistry, but you also have a passion for English, you can do a double major in both. You could be a computer engineering student and do a minor in philosophy. You could be doing a kinesiology program and take a major in French if you wanted. So we're extremely flexible for your degree program options, and we have over 700 different options for you to choose from across our three camps. We can go to the next slide. On top of just all the academic things that you can do at the university, there are also lots of things you can do outside the classroom. We've highlighted some of the opportunities like co-op programs and internship programs that you can get uh, across our universities in Canada. And that's one of the things that we offer at U of T as well. So some relevant paid work experience as part of your degree program. We also encourage students to be a part of our research opportunities. And we do that with our undergraduate students as early as your second year, where you can work on your own independent research projects and actually get credit for that at the university. We also really encourage our students to get some international experience beyond just coming to Canada, beyond just coming to Toronto to study. We encourage you to get outside of Canada and have some international experience as well through our exchange programs and our study abroad programs. And then outside of all of that, if you wanna just have fun at U of T, you can definitely do that as well. We have over a thousand different student clubs, committees and organizations you can be a part of. Canada's largest intramural sports program, as well as in a competitive varsity level sports program. So you can really mix and match your academic degree, your program options, as well as your extracurriculars to really have your own unique experience at the University of Toronto. Now we are, uh, as I mentioned, Canada's largest university, so uh, I'm not going to have an opportunity to talk about all of our undergraduate options for you in depth. 
including our academic requirements, but there are some links on the screen that will be excellent resources for you if you're looking for what our minimum academic requirements are for admission, and that is going to be the primary basis of admission for you at UT is your academic performance for those undergraduate programs. On top of that, if you're interested in learning about some of our scholarship opportunities, um, you can check out our Award Explorer, which is awardexplorer.utoronto.ca. The vast majority of our scholarships at U of T for the undergraduate level are going to be merit-based. So just by applying to the university, we're going to consider you automatically for some scholarships that could value at a few thousand dollars for your first year to upwards of forty dollars to $45,000 a year renewable for four years. The last thing I'll just mention is the Lester B. Pearson International Scholarship, which is our largest scholarship at U of T and is our equivalent to our full ride for undergraduate programs at the university. So if you're interested in that, definitely take a look at the Pearson website, which is pearson.utoronto.ca. And I think I'll leave it at that. That was uh, wonderful. Thank, thank you all for helping our students learn a little bit more about your institutions and a little bit more about Canada in general. We've got a lot of questions and we got about 10 minutes. Um, so I did wanna let uh, all the attendees know that you will be receiving a recording of this. Um, and you'll also receive some information, um, some of the specific links that were mentioned today and uh, ways to get additional questions that you might have answered. Um, and that was what Matt was referring to. Websites are usually the best way to go, but there will are some specific ways to get uh, additional questions answered. Um, I have some questions that are like pretty pretty straightforward yes or no answers from from you all. Um, at your institution, uh, a question from Maria: Can I live off campus? Yes. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of nodding, lots of yeses and absolutely. Um, uh, another question is, does your institution have a fully funded scholarship um, for international students? And I know some of you mentioned this here and there, but does a fully funded uh, scholarship for your institution? Yes. That, that'll yes. be a no for NBCC. We have our uh, Lester B. Pearson International Scholarship, which is the closest thing to a fully funded. It doesn't cover things like travel to Canada, but it would cover tuition, books, housing, and give students a living stipend as well. And we have the 2520K um, scholarships, which would cover tuition for most programs. Wonderful. Um, I, I think this is standard in the September, October timeframe, but when does your actual application open for the next year? <laughs> Matt, you're, you're, you're... <laughs> We're scheduled for October 1st, uh, subject to all the tech things getting checked. Uh, we like to say early October. So. Ditto. <laughs> same, same for October. <laughs> early October is the ideal time. And we have a first of October as well. Um, for NBCC and uh, our application has already opened for fall 2022 intake, uh, started on June 1st of 2021, which is uh, around three months ago. So uh, knowing how popular our program can be, I would encourage students to uh, apply as early uh, as you can. Okay. Um... The next question, I think, relates to a little bit of the test optional process that is happening in, in parts of the world. Um, does your university use the SAT, the ACT? Um, is it a requirement? This is probably more than just a yes, no. Uh, for us, it's a no. We don't use it. For the University of Toronto in previous years, and so pre-pandemic, for anyone completing a U.S. high school diploma, we would have asked for the SAT or the ACT. Other students in other curricula would not have been asked to do the SAT or ACT. Uh, for the past year and for this year upcoming, we are test optional. So if students don't have access to the test or don't want to submit their scores, that's fine. They won't be a disadvantage as part of the admissions process and we will reevaluate this year for the future. But 
it's looking like test optional, but TBD. Um, go, go ahead, John. There you go. Okay. Um, for Alberta, we don't require it. It's optional. If you do present it and happen to have a higher SAT score than in your school marks, then we would use it, but we would use whatever mark is higher, but it's not required. It is not required for NBCC. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, a question about transferring. If a student uh, is a second year university or college student and then planning to transfer into Canada, will they be repeating their first year or would they be going into some irregular second year type program? We would evaluate the um, student for course um, transfer and they may be able to credit all of their credits, some of their credits or none of their credits. What I would say if you're a transfer student is for any institution, please apply earlier as your admission will likely take a little longer than a high school um, student. I would also just recommend checking with each university to see if programs are open to transfer students. We have some that are not open to transfer students, like our computer science programs at the undergrad level do not accept transfer students. So definitely check with um, each one just in case there's any restrictions. Um, next question is, um, I have a 95 on my Duolingo English test score. Does that work for any of your institutions? So possibly uh, an answer to that would be what what is required? And I, Lucas put his score on there. What is required or uh, what are you looking for in regard to English language test scores? As it was showing on the slide for NBCC, we require 100 out of 160 and then no individual band lower than 90 for Duolingo test. So unfortunately, 95, it just is a little bit short of it. So, uh, so for Concordia, we actually have three different options. Um, at, in the 95 range, you would be eligible to begin with our uh, language improvement program. So it's it's kind of like an um, uh, intensive English option before you would study, uh, before you'd enter your studies. Uh, but for direct admission, um, so without that intensive English, uh, our minimum is 105. For the University of Toronto, we're looking for a minimum for direct admission of 120 to be admitted to our undergraduate program. Uh, much like Matt said for Concordia, we do have a program, um, an English language transition program for students who score 90 and above in Duolingo. So if you're just under that minimum of 120, you may be eligible to do an English language program for one year and then come in to do our uh, undergraduate program. And for the University of Alberta, we do require a 115 for direct admission. However, we do have an English bridging program, which you would be able to join with a score of um, 95. Thank you. Um, another question, we got just a few more questions uh, that we're gonna be able to address. Um, can I use my, uh, this is from Juan from Peru, can I use my IB um, diploma to enter into these universities, or uh, if I don't get the diploma, if I just have IB certificates, does that work? I can start that one for you, T. Uh, for the, we happily welcome students that are doing the IB diploma to the university, uh, so we can consider students based on their predicted scores for admission. If they're only doing IB courses or IB certificates and they're not graduating with the diploma, we are going to be looking for another kind of diploma to consider them for admission. So sometimes students in this case might be graduating with a U.S. high school diploma and some IB courses, and in which case that is fine. But if you're doing just IB courses and not getting another specific accredited diploma, it may be hard for us to consider you for admission. At the university, yeah. 
Sorry, John, go ahead. So, so, I think, uh, same for the uh, University of Alberta. Uh, we welcome IB diploma students and for some courses you would give them a transfer credit um, as well. If you don't have a full diploma, you may be, need to do a few other courses to top up um, your qualification before being admitted. Okay. Um, I think that the answer is always the website's the best way to go and reach out to your uh, admissions contact. Um, I've got two more questions and no more time, but I, I'm, I'm going to do them anyway. And uh, if you, <laughs> this would be a, um, do you have to apply to college or university and then apply for the scholarship or can I do it at the same time? At Concordia, we have options for both. Uh, we will consider everyone who submits an application for the majority of our merit scholarships. Some of our awards require a, a secondary application. So, um, yeah, it's a little bit of yes to both. For MBCC, that uh, uh, actually we don't have an entrance scholarship, and so students uh, has to be uh, a current MBCC student to be eligible to apply for any uh, scholarship or bursaries that we offer. So yes, that would be a uh, two separate applications for your admissions and a scholarship, and but your scholarship won't happen until when you first actually arrive on campus and starting your study. For U of T, most of our students are considered automatically for scholarships just by completing an application to the university. So filling it out online, submitting all of your documents, when we consider them for admission, we consider them for the scholarships as well. The exception to that is that large scholarship, the Lester B. Pearson International Scholarship, which also requires a school nomination from a student's high school, as well as a supplemental application by the student. The same would apply for University of Alberta as at Concordia and U Toronto. Wonderful. And uh, I guess the last question that we'll have, and, uh, and all, of the, all the questions will be addressed uh, on, on a response to you all later, uh, attendees. Thank you for all of the questions. We had over we had over 230 questions, so we obviously can't get to all of them. Um, but the final, the final bit would be, uh, what, what's some words of advice that you would have um, real quick for international students considering um, the process of applying to Canada um, or attending one of your institutions. Little words of wisdom from our experts. I can start and say just uh, really encourage students to do their research. Um, the Edu, Edu Canada is sort of the brand of Canadian universities and colleges internationally. So if a student goes to the Edu Canada website, which is educanada.ca. Um, they'll be able to find a ton of information about all the programs offered at all colleges and universities in Canada. So that's a great starting point to do the research and then hitting up each institution that you might be interested in just to find the nuances between our admission requirements, application process, and things like that. And the earlier that you can start doing that research, the better. I think we covered a lot of, about the how uh, high quality of education and how great opportunities are to pursue your study in Canada. But I just want to touch on the point that uh, it is a really, really welcoming and a friendly and safe place to study and also considering to stay. And we do have a lot of students who come with their spouses and their dependents as well. So they are looking for a place to settle or looking for a place to live. And uh, speaking from my own experience that uh, in the past 14 years since I first landed in Canada on June 21st, 2007, and uh, I do not regret a single second that I choose Canada as my education destination. I, I would say one of the things that I always stress uh, for international students, um, spend some time to you know, connect with people, the, the recruiters online to to not just do the research, but I think ask yourself the question and and contemplate on where do you see yourself being successful? Because this is a major step in your life. It's a it's a big commitment in terms of finances, in terms of 
uh, your, your time in terms of moving to another country. And so make the most out of it. Uh, all of our institutions are dedicated toward making you a, a success. We wanna see you graduate. We wanna see you as a proud alum. Um, but it's it's a partnership that requires as much of our effort creating the support services as you asking for help along the way uh, so that we can make sure that you walk across our stages uh, in four or five years uh, representing our institutions. Uh, just apply early. It's going to be a, one of the major decisions you make in your life and take advantage of all the opportunities offered by the university or college, both academically in terms of co-op and learning new things like learning how to ski or how to ice skate if you've never done uh, that before and enjoy your time studying and hopefully build yourself a great future in Canada. Well, I, uh, I wanna thank you all, John, Natasha, Matt, Lucas, for your time today uh, and your words of wisdom um, for our international students. Thank you very much, students all around the world who have signed up for the Duolingo English test, taken the Duolingo English test, um, and are interested in Canada. Um, more information will be coming. Uh, thank you for your attending, and we are going to say goodbye. Or uh, I guess in, in some parts of Canada, you would say... Au revoir. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I hope you have a great day wherever you are in the world.